Alright, what is going on my lovely ladies and gentlemen of the world? Today, we're here to talk about some more stuff. I've been doing too much damn talking lately, haven't I? Need to play some games. I plan on it. God damn it, I just haven't had the time. It's rough. It's rough in the life of Nate. Not really. Not really. It's just... I don't really have any games. You know, like, I got Dengeki. I need to play some Dengeki, mostly so I can just send it back. But it's hard to find a time when people are actually playing. <laughs> it was really sad uh, when I was looking for resources just to see, you know, like, let me get a general outlook of this game. Let me see if some people have, you know, figured out some shit that I haven't, you know, that I've missed that maybe opens up a whole new world of opportunities in terms of gameplay potential and blah, blah, blah. You know, maybe it's not as simplistic as I think it is. So I went and I looked and I was kind of searching around. And anyway, eventually I came to a point where there was a related video from Mr. Arturo Sanchez, NYC Furby. And he, it was a Dengeki Bunko uh, video. And the title was literally, wow, people still play this game? Dated. It was, I can't remember exactly, it was either March or April of earlier this year, like, surprise that people are still playing this game six months ago, over six months ago, like seven to eight, good golly, isn't that just the typical insight into the anime community, I mean, really, honestly, at this point, it really is just like, you either play Guilty Gear and you're set for life with a community, or you just rotate between, you know, whatever the new game is. Because I've heard Extend is, like, I've heard Persona 4 Arena actually has more people uh, online in general than Extend does. Which is not surprising because Extend is a shitty game. But who cares? Let's move on. Can we talk about the fact that uh, anime games have some weird-ass names? I was just sitting here thinking about it. Dengeki Bunko Fighting Climax. Like, you look at these other games, these iconic franchises in fighting games. Now, granted, I'm about to shit on one of the iconic franchises of fighting games. But... Street Fighter, King of Fighters, Mortal Kombat, Blaze Blue, Guilty Gear, Tengeki Bunko, Fighting Climax. Like, what the fuck are these titles? What do they even mean? It's pretty damn clear what the fuck Street Fighter means. Pretty damn clear what you're aiming for with King of Fighters. But, yeah, it's... <laughs> Step your name and game up, son. Come on. Anime Fighters 2015. I expect you to come out. Christmas, holiday season. On sale at Walmart or some shit. I don't fucking know. Moving forward. Um, So obviously, you know, the big talk of the town. Street Fighter 5. And now it's unfortunate that they did that stress test. Because now I'm looking out like every single day thinking maybe there'll be a stress test today. Maybe I'll get to play it some more. Because I'm actually, after that, they had uh, Laura unlocked for that. They had six characters again. And if I'm remembering correctly, it was Ryu, Kami, Chun, Laura, Karen, shit. Maybe that was it. Oh, N no, Nikali wasn't available. Rashid. Rashid was the sixth one available. Um, So I played Laura, like, entire, almost entirely Laura. I tried out Karen for a little bit because I actually thought, like, Despite the fact that I really don't like her design, mostly just because of the hair. The hair bugs the shit out of me. Um, I tried her out because I figured, you know, looking at her gameplay, I really think that's a solid character. But I only had... The stress test only lasted for like two hours, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. And I was using Laura for the first... I missed the first 30 minutes of it. Then I played Laura for the next hour. And so I basically had, you know, max 30 minutes of time to learn that character, and I was finding matches at a pretty rapid rate, so it wasn't like I was able to actually sit in training mode and even learn the character's moves. So I was like, you know what? 30 minutes left. I'm just gonna go back to Laura. Fuck it. So I did not get any experience with Karen, but I think after that, I'm pretty well settled on Chun as a main at this point in time, because, like, at first I was kind of pushed away from Chun because it was the thought that, like, alright, this is a solid character, but she's pretty basic, not a lot of options, I don't want to say not a lot of options, but she's very basic, she's very straightforward, and she kind of misses that wow factor that I really kind of enjoy finding in characters. That thing that thing that you can just do that makes people be like, what the fuck did I just get? Like, that hurt. That hurt to get hit by that. That kind of thing. Chun's kind of missing that. She does have some V-Trigger shit, but nothing, like, devastating, right? Where it's just like, oh my god, that just ruined me mentally. She doesn't really have any of that. But then it's, I've kind of realized, like, no character in this game really has anything like that. It's kind of just the entire 
point of this game is to bring it back to the basics. And so every character is kind of at that like basic, boring, somewhat limited level in terms of their potential. So like, you know, when I look at Laura and you compare them to past Street Fighter, I'm looking at Laura as like a more limited version of Abel. Where her light elbow special is basically her version of step kick. Except she doesn't have the roll for mix up. She doesn't have uh, as good of a command grab for mix up. She doesn't have the kind of as good of normals for mix up. And like, you know, obviously comparing that to step kick. Step kick is by far the superior move in terms of the both of them. And so it's kind of, it feels like, that's why I was so excited about Vega. Because when I saw Vega, when I started messing around with him and understanding him and getting, you know, better with him. I really felt like he had a lot of options, a lot of potential, and he wasn't just, like, this really basic character. And apparently they're taking that away. <laughs> From what I've read, they've nerfed a bunch of stuff of his, like, he can't juggle off of the anti-air swipe move that he had, the new special move he has in claw mode. Uh, they took away, like, standing heavy punch into claws, or stance change, that's no longer safe. They took away the link from, uh without having the claw on from crouching heavy no was it crouch, standing heavy punch into crouching medium punch they took that away so like they took a bunch of stuff away from him that made me really enjoy the character and it's just like all right now he's back to being a very footsie based limited combo potential character like the rest of the cast and that's kind of it's kind of bugging me to see all of that but anyway who cares that game is far off i feel like they're kind of treating this more as a you know like nothing solidified at this point obviously if they're making balance changes between each build when we see the character everything's going to change right up until the moment of release and even then they're still going to be doing rebalancings at some point in time you know no character is set in stone so who knows what's going to happen i feel like they're kind of treating the betas as also kind of a low test deal where they're seeing what people figure out what you know What's strong, what isn't, alright, what kid is what is too strong for a character, what isn't strong enough, that kind of thing. So who knows what shape these characters will actually be in uh, by the time the game actually gets released. But it is just very disappointing when you see a character like Vega, who for me was a character I just didn't really care about. I wasn't particularly interested in him, hadn't really seen anything that I was like, oh wow, I really want to use this character. And then, <coughs> oh, that was not good. And then I use him, and I'm just like, oh my god. This character is awesome! And then every reason why I thought he was awesome is taken away. <laughs> and it's kind of like, oh, well, isn't that fun? So, who knows where it'll be, but I just wanted to throw that out there. Let's talk about Dengeki! I need to play it. I will play it soon, and I need to get at least some videos of me playing it so I can send it back to Gamefly. Because I got a lot of games now in the queue that have finally come out. Like, there was about a month and a half of a period of time where it was just, these games are coming out in the future, but you don't have anything right now, so go ahead and hang on to whatever the hell you have for as long as you want. And I did. But now, there's a lot of stuff there, so I need to play it, but it's definitely not something that I'm looking to, like, stick with and continue playing. This is the kind of game that I feel like. It's like, alright, this is a game that you play for a couple months and then you move on from. It's just not... It's not deep enough. There's not really... I don't know, the characters don't really seem interesting enough. I, I, It doesn't help that I'm not a fan of any of the anime. Like, I don't know any of the animes that they've pulled characters from in this. Obviously, I know Valkyria Chronicles, but that is not an anime. That is a video game. So, and, you know, Akira from uh, Virtua Fighter. I know him, but I don't care about him. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see where that goes. What else? Central Fiction got a confirmed arcade release date of November 19th, which means... We might see it in America by next Christmas. <laughs> it's usually like five, six month wait between the arcade release and the Japanese console release. And then after that, who knows? It's been anywhere from like three months to a year that it could be released in that time. So, unfortunately, probably not going to be seeing Central Fiction at Evo 2016. Which means, shit, actually, what would be there? I don't think, I really don't think Persona 4 Arena or Blaze Blue Extend is going to get into Evo. Like, if neither of those get into EVO, they might give Street Fighter 4 a swan song. They might actually do that. Like, they might make Street Fighter 5 be the main event, but then also, you know, the final EVO uh, Ultra Street Fighter 4, since Street Fighter 5 doesn't release until February. So they might do that. They might have it so the main games are uh, Street Fighter 5, Ultra Street Fighter 4, the two Smash, Mortal Kombat X, 
shit, what was the, what was the, what was I thinking about that I already Marvel vs. Capcom three maybe. The community there has been dwindling, so who knows what could happen between now and Evil 2016. But what was the other game that I was thinking about? That, like, Tekken, obviously, Tekken 7. Um, there was something else that was, like, in my brain, and now I've lost it. Did I say Guilty Gear? That's probably the one that I was thinking about. I don't know. Anyway, point being, basically all the games that were there last year, except now, instead of uh, Persona 4 Arena, they'll just have Ultra Street Fighter 4. That's what I'm calling out. We'll see where it goes. But I think they might do that. Either that or they're going to like... No, there's too much time between Street Fighter V's release and the end of Capcom Pro Tour. Because I was going to say, that would be a fitting end if the finale of Capcom Pro Tour 2015 was actually the finale of like tournament Ultra Street Fighter Four. That would be like a really solid end to it. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know where it's going to go. But... I definitely don't think there's enough of a community to rally behind any of the anime games aside from Guilty Gear to get it into EVO 2016 and actually have it deserve to be there. <sighs> Gotta love the uh, anime release schedule. It's, just, it's absurd. It's really I, I've talked about all I can about it in the past. Not gonna get into it here, so let's move into more Japanese stuff. JRPGs! I want to talk about JRPGs because Tales of Zestaria came out recently and it made me sad. <laughs> it's not even actually that bad like I think out of the four that have been recently released the Tales of Zillia 1 and 2 Tales of Graces F and Tales of Zestaria I think Tales of Zestaria is probably the strongest one but that is like saying this shit smelled a little bit not as bad as those previous three shits maybe I'm getting healthier <laughs> it's just oh, it's really sad because I really did despite you know Tales of Vesperia was uh, what got me into JRPGs, what really, like, I'd played JRPGs before then, but Tales of Vesperia was the first one that I was like, oh, this is a JRPG, let me look into more JRPGs, and so I did, and that's when I was like, oh, I've played a bunch of JRPGs already, I actually enjoy this shit, but that is what ended up getting me into the Shin Megami Tensei series, uh, and that is what ended up getting me into the Suikoden series, and everything that is to do with Atlas, and blah, blah, blah. You know, all the other JRPGs I've played since then is basically because of Tales of Vesperia. So it's very sad to have this game that I hold in my heart so fondly be followed up with these four games. And I'm just like, wow, these are not worth finishing. And I didn't finish Tales of Vesperia. That is the first Tales of game. I even finished Tales of Symphonia Dawn of the New World. You know how bad that game was? Out of all the four that I just mentioned... Tales of Symphonia Dawn of the New World, significantly worse than all of them. Oh my god, the most unlikable main character for the first, like, 15 hours. Just a whiny bitch. Oh my god, he is so unlikable. And, but, and I will say this, if any game ever has any sort of monster recruitment feature, I'm pulled in. It's because Pokemon was like the first major game that ever came out that really hooked the hell out of me. So anything that has any kind of like monster capture slash recruitment kind of system, I will try it and I will probably play it. And Dawn of the New World had that shit. God damn it. So that kind of, that, that drew me in and that made me finish it despite how bad the script for the game was. But, uh... Yeah, Tales of Zestaria doesn't have that. Tales of Graces doesn't have that. Tales of Zillia doesn't have that shit. So, uh, yeah. But what was another game? I was just thinking about... There was another game. Dragon Quest V? I always mix up 4 and 5. I think it's 5, though. Now, that's not to say that Dragon Quest V is a bad game without the monster recruitment feature. Dragon Quest V is probably my favorite Dragon Quest game. Period. Like, at all. Um, But... That also featured monster recruitment in there. And oh my god, it's the best! I love it! But it had it, one of the best stories that I have played in gaming, period. But anyway, we're going a little bit off topic. This is not about Dragon Quest. This is about my disappointment. Man, I really have not played, like, a new JRPG. Oh no, Bravely Default. Bravely Default was really solid. I really enjoyed that. But, like, I'm kind of just looking up and seeing stuff. Radiant Historia. My favorite... That's probably in my top five favorite games of all time. I adore that game. That was an absolutely amazing game. So let's switch away from mobile. Because mobile... But Shin Megami Tensei 4 was a disappointment. There! Put my foot down! 
God damn it. But I just have not played an experience that was like, uh, at least on the consoles. Again, if we're looking at solely consoles, I just have not played a JRPG. It was even close to matching up to Tales of Vesperia, and it makes me sad. Because you have all these things, you know, all this new technology, all this new potential with, you know, graphical things you can do. Who knows? You know, the world is basically open to you at this point in time. Jesus Christ, The Witcher 3 had a recent, not recent, it's probably about a month, two months old by now. But the latest patch that I am aware of for The Witcher 3 was like 18 gigabytes. That's like two and a half times the size of an Xbox 360 game, of an entire Xbox 360 game. Holy shit, that's a huge patch. You have the world opened up to you for creation. And so it's so sad to see it squandered like this. Especially when it's, you know... I enjoy the gameplay. I kind of... I had issues with it, but I'm not going to get into them. Because I know probably most of you don't even give a shit. But the camera was pretty bad. <laughs> just to, like, nail down the one thing everybody and their mother complains about with that game. The camera change was just odd. Especially because you're still... So, like, for those of you that don't know the Tales of series, you are put into a circular arena, and you just fight within that circular arena. It's a 3D battle system, and you just fight inside of it. But in Tales of Zestaria, for some reason, like, the camera was just kind of open at that point, just kind of gave you a broad view of the field. In Tales of Zestaria, they changed the camera to focus on, like, the back of the person you are controlling. So, you don't really get a good view of everything that's going on around you. It's pretty focused. Uh, mainly on like what you are, what your character is specifically looking at. I don't understand why they changed that though. When you're still in the exact same arena, you're still in that same circular, spherical, however you want to send circular as a 2D term, spherical would be the 3D term. You're in this spherical arena. <laughs> it's still the exact same setup that you've always had. Why would you change the camera? It's so confusing. But anyway, that is beside the point. I'm saddened about JRPGs. They make me sad. And they need to stop making me sad. You know what else makes me sad since I'm sitting here staring at it? Limeade. Limeade makes me goddamn sad. <laughs> I uh, I don't know why I'm still... Like, I, once I bought Limeade to try and utilize in my smoothie concoctions when I was being all mad scientist, just throwing shit together and see what stuck. You know, see, does this taste good? Does this not taste good? Limeade was the worst addition I could have ever thought of because the problem is that the taste is so overpowering. It does not matter what else you have in there. It is absolutely irrelevant what else you throw in there. You put in like a tiny little squeezed droplet of lime in that bitch, the entire thing tastes like lime. Doesn't matter. What you can throw in, oranges, strawberries, mangoes, bananas, apples, any other kind of fruit, any other kind of, well, it doesn't really matter if you throw in vegetables because most vegetables don't really have strong uh, taste to begin with, especially in comparison to fruits. That's why most people prefer fruits over vegetables. These vegetables tend to be pretty bland and whatnot, but that's beside the point. Limeade fucking sucks, and I bought a pomegranate limeade concoction thing that is also enhanced with wild berry extract. They could have just stamped limeade on this shit, and I would have been like, why is it red? I don't understand why it's red if it's just limeade. But I would not have known there were any other ingredients in this motherfucker. If they had just said, no, it's just limeade, die. I mean, we just died it. Why not? We had some spare time. We were fucking bored. We made some red limeade. Don't judge us. They could have said that. And I would have fucking believed them because the only goddamn thing I can taste is limeade. So there you have it, folks. The official word on the street. Nate hates some fucking limeade. God damn it. You know what else Nate, you know what else Nate hates? School! Nate hates school! You know why? Because it's bullshit! They need to... They need to make classes bigger. <laughs> my, te my, my current calculus teacher, which... I adore her. She has almost, like, the same exact kind of humor that I have. So, like, you know, listening to her teach is perfect. Because she actually keeps me engaged. Because she says things that, you know, make me grin like an idiot. I enjoy being in her classroom. Like, she is definitely, if I had to make a list of teachers that uh, were uh, among the best, she would be near the top. I greatly enjoy taking one of her classes. So, I was truly hoping, because she teaches anywhere between, like, the highest level of calculus 
all the way down to like college algebra, which is basically like if you take it's basically college algebra, then trig, then you know the three levels of calculus. So I was hoping that she would be teaching the next level of calculus, so I can continue on. You know, I I know this teacher. I understand her teaching methods. I understand what she expects. You're not going into a whole new system and basically having to relearn how a classroom functions. You know already. So, you know, you have that benefit of knowledge going for you at the beginning. But so, unfortunately, she is not. She's teaching the level two steps above and the level two steps below next semester. So I had to look for a new teacher. Now, she also did the benefit for our classroom of telling people, you know, like, all right, this is who I think you should take. This is who I think you should not take. Out of the five teachers available, she listed one of them as... This is a teacher I think you should take. And then the rest of them were like, this teacher's okay, but... <laughs> and then two of them were just terrible. Like, one of them I knew was terrible because he subbed in for a week during my trigonometry class. And no joke, like, overall attendance of that class was down probably about 60% throughout the week. Just because that dude went off on so many tangents. Who knows what the fuck he was talking about. He didn't even stay on subject. I may have even bitched about this previously because of one specific thing he says, which I, which that he said, which I still have not forgotten. He taught like completely different material, not different material, but like all of his terminology was different, all of his syntax was different, and he blatantly told the class, "This is not what your normal teacher would be teaching you. This is not." the thing that your normal teacher would be focusing on. This is probably not what's even going to be on the test. But I don't care. This is what I teach. So listen up. And that was the moment where I was like, oh, well, I'm just not going to come to class for the next week. And that's what I did. I came the first day of that week and heard that spiel. And then I came the last day of the week because he said, our, our teacher did say very specifically, if you miss three days, that's how, you know, the call, I don't know if this is universal or if this is just, you know, my own specific college's rules. But teachers have the right to drop any student. Most of them don't. But teachers do retain the right to drop any student out of their classroom if they miss more than three periods of class without like a valid excuse you know if you're like oh well i just got into a car crash and i've been in the hospital for the past week i don't think they're gonna drop you from the class i don't think they're allowed to do that but if you just don't fucking show up peace out you're gone and he said that you know like most teachers do not follow this but i will you have to be here and i will not allow somebody to stick around that doesn't even respect me enough to show up and put in work. Like, and then, you know, that's perfectly fine. I, whatever, you know, it's your prerogative, it's the rules. Follow what you do. So, I had already missed one day that semester because of other circumstances. So, I skipped my last two days knowing that that meant I could not miss one single other day for the rest of the semester. And I was happy to do it. Best decision I've made in my life. But anyway, so he was one of the calculus teachers like, no, I'm not taking that. Hell no, I'm not taking that, dude. But so the one person that she pointed out is like, this is definitely somebody worth teaching. If I had to choose which class to take, this would be the person's class that I would take. Now, that was said to a group of maybe, I would say our class has dwindled to about 20 students by now. You know, you start out with a full classroom of about 40. Uh, then, you know, time passes on. People fail the first test. All right, shit, I can't start with the failing grade. I'm out. A couple people drop. You move further on. You get to the second test. Now people have gotten two Ds on their test. I'm like, all right, I can't recover from this. I'm going to drop, and I'm going to try it again next semester. Class dwindles down a little bit more. So anyway, point being, we're down to about half the size that we, were, that we started at. So you're looking at a group of 20 students that are listening to this. We're the only level of calculus that this specific teacher has so she could not have given this spiel to a bunch of other people that class filled up within so the way our registration works is like there's a small pool of students that is released every hour and able to register for classes starting at a specific date and you know it continues on until all of the students are allowed to register basically I was at, like, the eighth hour available, like, in the eighth pool of students that could potentially register. The class was already full in waitlisting by the time I got there. Two hours after I signed up, the waitlist was full. That's 55 total students that have signed up for this woman's class. Now, the way you know that anybody who does not get into this class is in some goddamn trouble, 
Nobody else on that list of five teachers besides this one even had double digits of people registered for that class yet. Not a single one had more than eight people. Oh my god. And that one person had eight, and the person closest to them had three. <laughs> oh god. I hope I get into that class. I'm waitlisted at like number six or seven or something like that. I can actually look, but I'm too lazy. But I, I know I'm around six or seven because the uh, number when I checked for what my code would be was at five. So there's no way like eight people signed up before me. So, point being... <laughs> That's scary, but you don't care about that. I just spent eight minutes talking about what you don't probably don't give a shit about. Let's talk about Fallout 4. Why did I buy this game? <laughs> I don't know why. Like I really, Morrowind. Going back into games of my past that were like the best things ever. Morrowind was the best thing ever. I loved it. I played it so much. So goddamn much, you have no idea, and I probably didn't even experience half of what that game had to offer. Goddamn, did I love me some Morrowind. Then I played Oblivion. Eh, it was okay. The main quest was like the worst thing I've ever experienced in my life. Fuck those Demon Gate dungeons or whatever the hell they were called. Oblivion Gates, I guess, since the game was called Oblivion. That's probably what the thing was named after. Hated those with a fiery passion. Never have I seen so much goddamn red and black in my life since I went to a Fall Out Boy concert. Is that even relevant anymore? The last time I saw Fall Out Boy anything, it was a crowd of like 12-year-old girls. So I don't know if the whole emo thing, Fall Out Boy's emo, I don't know if that still stands. It's been a while since I've been in high school, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not caught up on today's youth and the emo fashion stuff. I don't even know why I'm talking about it. I'm trying to be funny, but I know it's not working. I know that shit isn't funny. I'm sitting here thinking, like, this is not funny. Stop talking. I'm just, dra I'm just dragging it along now. Taking it outside. Need to beat it to death. I apologize. We move forward. The funny thing is, right now, I'm wearing a red and black shirt. <laughs> with black basketball shorts. <laughs> yeah! With red juice in front of me. God damn it. And my microphone has a red light on it. And it's black. It's also silver. But ignore the silver. It's black and red. My TV's black. My... Damn. All of my consoles are black. Except my Wii. Hmm. Do they even make consoles that aren't black anymore? Because the Wii U was black at the start, right? I know they've made special versions of it. But the PS Vita, that's black. I think the very first version of the 3DS was black. I have a blue one. Um... My backpack is black. My shoes are black. Well, my shoes have to be black because that's work thing. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna buy separate work and regular shoes. Fuck that. Work's not that important. <laughs> but yeah, I have a lot of black. My goddamn video capture LGP is black and red. Shit, I'm emo. God damn it. Moving forward. <laughs> um. Shit, what was I even talking about? Oh, Fallout 4. So, then Fallout 3 came out. I really, I did enjoy Fallout 3 quite a bit. Um, not as much as I probably should have. Like, I think if I revisit it, I would enjoy it a lot more. But then, New Vegas came out, and I just, that game crashed on me so much. Apparently, it was a hell of a lot better, like, six months down the road when a bunch of patches had come through and stuff got fixed and blah, blah, blah. But who has time for that? I don't. So... I didn't really play much in New Vegas, and then Skyrim came out, and I just never got into it, and so I should have known, like, alright, I never really got into Skyrim, I'm probably not gonna get all that deep into Fallout 4, and now I've been playing it, and I realize what actually made me so mad about New Vegas, the original time that made it so, like, and Fallout 3, somewhat, um, but it was a lot worse in Fallout New Vegas, was that there are so many times when you were just sent somewhere. Not like, no, I don't want to say necessarily sent somewhere, but where you find something that directs you somewhere. And then you go to a region that is just so far beyond your current capabilities that you just get annihilated. And like, so my example of this, I was doing a quest chain. Now, part of this is my, well, kind of my, it's not really my fault because the game was directing me and didn't really make any indication this was how shit worked. But, Early on in the game, you can save a group. I think you have to save a group of people, actually. And then you take them to the first settlement, and then the settlement opens up, and then you can start doing quests to develop said settlement. So I was thinking when I was doing all these quests that this was a quest chain that would eventually culminate in something bigger. And, you know, I was going somewhere with this. There was a point to it. 
Now, after I've played more and I know more about the game, now I know like this is just an infinite set of quests that are just given to you, one after the other. It's never ending. Um, and it's just like, you know, you'll hear about a settlement that needs help, so you go out to that settlement, you see what they require, they tell you, Oh, this pe this group of people nearby is causing us trouble. Please go and attack them and kill them. And nearby is about 30 miles in like the opposite direction through incredibly mountainous terrain that nobody in their right minds would ever actually cross. There are far better places to go brigand and stuff elsewhere. So who the fuck would go attack this random settlement of two people with 17% goddamn happiness that has nothing to their damn name? They don't care about you. Why the fuck are you sending me all the way out here? But point being, <laughs> I got sent there. And so, like I said, I didn't know at the time. I thought this was a part of an actual quest chain that was leading me somewhere story-wise. I didn't know that it was just an infinite set of quests that you can repeat over and over and over in order to get experience and items and develop settlements and whatnot. So, I go to this place, and it's my first encounter with super mutants. I am level 6 at this moment in time. Level 6. So, I walk up. I turn the gate. I hear, Ooh, what I hear! And then I eat a rocket to the face. Rocket directly to the face. I die. Which usually occurs if you eat a live rocket. As a bound... Except later on, ironically, I didn't even mean to tie this in, but it does tie in perfectly with the story I got later for you. So, I died. And I was like, okay. There's no indication that, like, I'm clearly not supposed to be here. I'm just clearly not supposed to get hit by rockets. <laughs> that was the lesson I learned at that moment. So I decided to be a bit more careful. I was a bit more careful this time around. I went in, I drew some attention away, and then I hid behind, you know, some stuff that was also hidden behind some other stuff that was, likewise, hidden behind some other stuff that would prevent any particularly violent-feeling rockets at the time from getting near me. So, I drew this attention away. Pulled out my trusty old shotgun because I have a mutant hound running at me, so obviously this dude's gonna try and get in close, so let me pull out my close-range weapon. I fire a shotgun blast to his goddamn face. He takes about 15% damage. Ish. He bites me. I take 75% damage. Ish. So I enter VATS mode thinking, what the fuck just happened? So, in VATS mode, I find out my level 6 ass is fighting a level 16 mutant hound. Well, isn't that fucking fantastic? So I die. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try this one more time. But I'm not going to pull out a shotgun. I'm not going to be brave. I'm going to fight like an absolute bitch. Because I'm sure I'm probably going to get some decent experience for clearing this area. And it will be very well worth the struggle. So, I go back in. I pull out my trusty old sniper rifle. I kill the dude with the rockets. I did not get very good XP. <laughs> I got like 40. Whoop the fucking do. And then a suicide bomber comes out. They have super uh, specific super mutants like carry around a mini nuke in their hands. They arm it and then they run at you. And you have to kill them before they get near you or they will detonate that mini nuke. Similar to how eating a rocket will kill you, being near a mini nuke blast will also kill you. Now he didn't do that. He killed my dog. Who the fuck mini nukes a dog? This dude did. So I was kind of mad about that. A little bit. Mad enough to not really have time to notice that there was a blinking indicator next to me that was saying that a car was about to explode nearby. That car then exploded. I then died. I fucked off that quest. And I didn't come back till I was level 15 and I bodied every motherfucker in that building. God, I hated that shit. Well, so that's kind of, you know, that's a more kind of realistic example as to what happened. But I found just some random hint that was like, it just, it showed up on the miscellaneous quest section. And it was like, hey, go check out this area. So I look at it and it's like all the way on the northeastern side of the map. Which anybody who knows anything about the map of Fallout 4 now knows, the northeast corner of the map probably features the most dangerous enemies in the game. I don't know if it actually does, but in terms of my own personal experience, it does. So I go to this, and now keep in mind, I got this hint when I was like level 10 or something like that. I finally got around to going over there when I was level 16. So I'm wandering around. Eventually, I get to level 17. 
I'm at full health, I'm feeling good, because that's what happens when you reach a new level, it heals you back to full. I go into the building, it says, explore this place, so I explore this place. And now it's kind of being like, you know, a house of horrors kind of thing. Like, kind of like an aliens kind of a deal. You hear stuff, stuff is happening, bodies are falling, but you don't actually get to see anything. So I don't really know, I mean, obviously something dangerous is gonna pop out at me, but surely they wouldn't send anything too dangerous at me. Surely! So I get to the end. Death Claw awaits me. Alright, whatever. We'll, we'll see what happens. I shoot him. At first, I thought I missed. Because nothing happened with that dude's health bar. Nothing. So like I said, at first, I thought I missed. Then he walked up and one-shot me. Like, I didn't even have time to enter Vance. Vance. I didn't even have time to enter Vats mode. The motherfucker just one-shot me. Okay, well, clearly I'm not supposed to get close to this dude. Let me try this again. So... A dude that hit, a dude that a, the Death Claw had killed very close by to him had a missile launcher. How convenient. So I grabbed said missile launcher. And I prepared myself. And I aggroed the Death Claw. And as he was lunging at me, mouth wide fucking open, I shot him in the mouth with a rocket that exploded. It did maybe 5% of his health if I am lucky. What the fuck? Pussy kind of rocket was that. So anyway, after doing that, I enter Vats mode very rapidly, might I add. Creaming my pants a little bit. Not creaming my pants. That's an entire different thing. Pissing my pants a little bit. Trust me, I was not fapping to that death claw. Believe me, they are some ugly some bitches. Level 61. That motherfucker was level 61. I was level 17. What? In the goddamn hell kind of business this game think it's running. Sending my ass out after a level 61 death claw. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and so that's when I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a little bit of a break. This is bullshit. And so I took a break and I haven't gone back since. <sighs> it really does. It irritates me. I mean, like, that's the kind of... I understand... Wanting to gate area, you know, like you don't want to just put somebody on a path and say you have to follow this path. So in Fallout, you have you know this big wide world to explore. That's the entire point of it, right? You got this whole wide world to go explore and enjoy, except for the fact that you simply really cannot compete with enemies unless, like, until the point where you start actually finding. Like at this point, um, I haven't really found any specifically powerful weapons. And I don't have the ability to create my own, like, weapon mods or enough weapon mods to actually, you know, make really effective weapons that are super dangerous and shit. So I haven't really gotten anything particularly impressive in terms of weaponry. And that's pretty much what you need if you want to fight shit high above your level. You either need to be at a similar level or you need equipment that makes up for that level difference. There's really no, like... Oh, with intelligent tactics here, I can totally beat this dude. That's not going to happen because then, you know, like I said, you run into this a dude like this death claw where it is you can just cannot do a realistic amount of damage to make up for the fact that you will get one shot if he even moderately stares at you and winks and that fucking buffeting of air from the wink is going to kill you. That's how that fight works out. It's not fair. There's nothing you can do about it. There's no amount of intelligence that will allow you to like set an entire path of mines to have this dude walk through because you could put down a hundred goddamn mines and this dude would maybe be down 50 percent health and at that point you're running out of inventory space <laughs> so like ugh, that was what really irked me is like you have there's just there's too many areas that are straight gated so it's like oh wow you have this whole wide world to explore you just can't fight anything in it because you'll die numerous times and that always that's the part that kind of irks me is like not necessarily that that exists but that there's so much of it and the other thing that i kind of think i might have, may have figured out the game was very clearly meant for you to use power armor so you know the, obviously the most protection you can get is through power armor it's the uh, unquestionable there's no amount of armor in the game there's no combination of armor in the game that will get even close to the protection that a suit of power armor can give you. And as far as I'm aware, armor you're wearing stacks with power armor as well. So it's like, there's no downside to using power armor. The only limitation to power armor is that you need 
a specific item to power them. And like at the very beginning of the game, there are very, those are few and far between. Um, but yeah, it's just with the amount of damage I kind of seem to take from everything. It really does seem like the game is kind of me meant to be played with power armor and balanced around the existence of power armor. And that kind of irks me. Cause like I said, those items are pretty few and far between. I don't have the energy available to be able to just, play in power armor 24 7 so i don't know i don't know all the games irk me not really i'm trying to think if there's anything else to talk about but there really isn't i've talked for long enough anyway it's been goddamn we have 40 minutes of me talking that's far too much far too much peace out